Hi there, uh, my name is Andrew Kudravtsev. Welcome to Fairlight CMI Series 3 overview. Uh, that would be our actually sales overview because I'm selling that system currently on eBay. So the purpose of that video to get you introduced to the system components, what's included into our eBay auction, uh, what comes with the system, how it works, and all our details. So I'll try to make just a one-shot video for you. If you have any other additional questions, welcome, shoot me a message and I can make another video for you with some additional clarifications if needed. So let's have a look on the system, on all ingredients of the system. First of all, what you see here is everything included into the auction. That actually means that the Series 3 itself, Series 3 mainframe, the keyboard, uh, uh, alphanumeric keyboard, monitor, another keyboard, there is a special uh, small form factor PC here, um, uh, CMI3 series stand and music keyboard stand as well as additional documentation and cables, everything is included. So I will show you what, how it works and actually what's inside the system including every system component. But that basically the, the whole option right now. So let's have a look. Uh, I will start probably with the mainframe because uh, in terms of value that's the most important component here. What you see here it's a series 3 mainframe which is an amazing condition. It's freshly painted all around so it's a it's a freshly painted side panels freshly painted in black uh, the frame all all cleaned up with ma many special components inside it I'll show you so first of all let's have a look what's inside the system so that is our system uh, we have eight channel cards here we have Three memory cards by 8 megabytes which give us 22 megabytes and four memory cards by 4 megabytes. So altogether that comes to 32 megabytes, that's the maximum memory size for that system. So it's a full memory, full channel. Uh, the system comes with, their, um, uh, with all obviously peripheral components. You also I'll post additional pictures of every card, so you may see the revision of the card. But that's basically the configuration of the system. On that side, we still have original 8-inch floppy drive. It's connected, but it's currently unpowered. I'll explain later why. We still have original tape drive, which works. It's powered and it works. We have a fan speed control, I will show you that fancy stuff, it's really good looking. And we have a special boot drive here. So, about boot drive, uh, that's basically the same drive I used last time for my other Series 3. So, that board called SCSI to SD, it uses SD card to emulate a SCSI drive. And this SD card is mounted in that tray and tray goes into the system and locks. So if you don't have uh, so you can lock it and nobody can take this out. So as soon as it's locked uh, now we can power it on and the, the, the SCSI to SD will be detected. So that's what what we have on this side. Let's have a look on that side, on the back side. Basically nothing special, uh, we have original sampling card which has two analog inputs and this card gives that uh, initial character of a Series 3 so you may know that there are a couple of different versions and modifications of a sampling card one has uh, digital inputs and analog inputs this one is the original one, and, I mean it's the first one actually, it has only analog inputs then we have uh, eight, 8 analog cards, output cards, uh, which gives a total 16 channels available. And we have a mixer card, which gives only one mono output coming across all of these cards. And uh, then we have a synchronization card, a MIDI card, 
VJ breakout board here and that is basically the standard connection uh, 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 panel for our keyboard, for power, we'll see that later on. So, looks great, everything is clean, everything is in the best possible condition. Let's move that system here. What you may see um, on the back side, and let's have a look here. But first of all, it's very special frame, especially designed for these, uh, for their music keyboard of a Series 3, actually Series 2 keyboard will fit as well. Uh, we have a power distribution on the back side here. We have mini PC here on that side. That is connected, actually. Uh, my idea was that the main frame goes under a music keyboard, but if you don't like that idea and you want to put that on side, you can do that actually. That's the reason uh, we have about 10 feet cables for power and for keyboard. I'm also including VJ cable, which gives you a longer distance, and that's possible to use somewhere on the side. So let's connect everything uh, and power on the system. So first what I'm doing, I'm plugging my keyboard, musical keyboard, power, then serial cable, which actually goes to a music keyboard. For a music keyboard, that special cable goes to the mini PC. And for mini PC, there is another hook, which goes to the alphanumeric keyboard, uh, original CMI. I will show you why I did that, so I believe you'll be excited by that. So I connected serial power, system power, and now I need VJ. Yeah, and by the way, all analog output cards are calibrated carefully. They have the same specs, fully meet factory specs. And it took a time to calibrate one by one everything. So now from that side it's it's ready. What I'm doing, I'm power on the main switch here. And what you may notice, system started the fans. So what's happening right now? CMI is not running, but the fans started, and I did that on purpose because the system inside has first of all brand new power supply for everything. It has a brand new special additional power supply for the fans. So that, that to guarantee that, uh, that fans are running from a special power supply, from separate power supply. And you see it's currently off, but the fans are running. I did that on purpose. For instance, you played this system and it became really hot. We shut it down and fans are still spinning to make her Keep going out of the system. So next, I'm starting mini PC. That's quite simple. This mini PC, first of all, is diskless. It runs Compact Flash, which is kind of uh, SSD inside that system, and it boots Windows XP. I'll explain why I'm doing that later on. So on the next stage, I'm switching the input on the monitor. And now I'm ready to start CMI. Oh cool, the system started. What you see here, we have 32 megabytes of sample memory. As I said, we have eight analog channel cards, I'm sorry, eight channel cards installed here. All of them detected. Now system boots to the, to the operating system 9.34 which is the best operating system for just CMI functionality. Takes a time to boot the system here. Um, on the log screen you see the current layout for, for the hard drive configuration. Again, remember that we have very special thing here that sits here, SD card. It actually, it has 16 gigabyte SD card, which is partitioned to emulate four hard drives, so you can get four hard drives 
times 4 gigabyte of a capacity. It's full of different samples, including fully uh, recovered factory samples. I believe it's the it's it's the most complete collection of factory samples, including some user samples. On that side, as I promised, we have our uh, fan control, very fancy. So the system operates in a four zones of the fans and two zones, zone one and zone two. Zone one goes to the front, zone two goes to the back side, zone three is inside and zone four is on the back panel. So we can control actually the RPM of every zone individually, for instance, these pieces usually hot, that piece, back piece with analog cards is also quite hot, so we may need to just a precise control of every fan zone. So here you see RPMs, here you see the temperature. So right now it's a kind of cold inside, cold inside the house, it's just a 20 degrees on the temper, temperature sensors. I believe by the end of the demonstration we'll see the real temperature here, going up to 30 degrees, maybe 32 degrees. Uh, Again, yeah, that's everything is automatically controlled with that board here. So if temperature is going really high, the fan speed will be adjusted automatically. But you also have an option to manually control it. So like with these potentiometers, you can set the base, and uh, everything will be controlled automatically. So system is booted currently. Uh, what you may see here, we just boot to the. Uh, to the screen of last open folder I had. Uh, let me just take any sample, for instance these samples. It's good. System is loading, uh, it takes some time based on our basically sample size. Now we are moving to the, to the control page and I want to assign all 16 voices to a sample. Actually, I didn't cook the analog output, so I'll be using more output of our mixer board. Just to put it to a mixer. Obviously, if you need to have a sterile control, you have to use individual outputs. All of these outputs have been really cleaned and they are amazing condition. channel activity obviously in that configuration we don't have a router that's why you always have it assigned to the channel one of a router please keep in mind that the alphanumeric keyboard actually is in really good condition but unfortunately it misses one key here the key is still functioning it just misses the cab so if I need to press F7 I can still do that so actually no key unfortunately no any source to find a replacement for this key. Touch touchpad also works. So for instance, if I move into that screen, so uh, I can control everything with the touchpad. Now let's move to the most interesting piece here. What we have here, uh, let me switch quickly to Windows machine. So we have a small program called See My Control. See my control uh, was really designed a couple of years ago, probably about 10 years ago, uh, and it allows using the serial port of a mini PC to control the CMI. At the same time, I'm able to use my original keyboard, and now I can use my new keyboard with touchpad. So without have mouse, I, I prefer really touchpad, but the idea here you can control it with just your finger, you don't need a hand to control it. So as soon as I did it, I set up so this keyboard also also works as well as this keyboard. So it's it's quite nice and 
my touchpad works as well. So now if I need to assign the channels or do some changes, I can do that with touchpad and it's it's the, it's the best way to do that. I mean, it's all reliable and brand new keyboard. Uh, touchpad is in great condition and you can control it. What also you can do, because the system is running Windows XP, and you can use some scripting programs to automate the actions you do on the keyboard. For instance, you want to create a bunch of instruments, or you want to do some uh, some uh, some some scenarios a couple of times. For instance, do sampling or just preview all the samples. You can automate that with a program running on that PC, and you don't need to type it. You just can hit a button, record your actions, and then you can repeat it multiple times. So oh, that's a really cool thing about that. Now, what I'm going to do, I want to show how sampling works, and we can do some real-time sampling and see how the system operates. So first, I will reset the instrument. I will create a new instrument. I want to create new voice. Voice create new voice. Like this. Cool. Instrument here, voice is here. Right away I will assign all my 16 channels. Everything assigned and I'll move to real sampling. So F7 again, no cap on this that key. System is prepared. I'm going to use analog input. That's the only input I have on that card. I'll be doing mono sampling using right input channel. Now I need to plug my source into the right channel. So that goes here, plugged in. Let's do some preview. Cool. We will sample this sound into a fairway. I will set, for instance, 5 seconds of a sampling time. I will set trigger level at 10% and done. So now I'm ready to start the sampling. I hit F13. Sampling is in progress and now I hit my key. Mm -hmm. Cool, that, sam that sampled, we can preview it by F1. Alright, now we will go to F6, web edit page. We will do auto loop. Yeah. There is a pop, we can adjust it, but when you hear it, now we can play the sample. Okay, it works. Alright, what else we need to check? So you see that the keyboard is freshly painted. It's really great condition, did my best to paint it carefully. Uh, this side of the keyboard with a small display here that was also repainted so it's really shining black uh, this keyboard is new this touchpad keyboard is in great condition this keyboard is obviously used but still works very clean inside it every key here is adjusted because that's very special keyboard. Uh, Fairlight did that on very special cases. It's a weighted keyboard. So, but, but. so the, the keyboard itself is really a nice weighted keyboard, not typical included. That keyboard came from the Stuart, uh, Stuart Copland original gig. I I maintained it carefully. I adjusted every key because it has a small screw for adjustment and I also cleaned 
the contact of every key here. Everything works. All right. What else I need to show you for this system? I think I pretty much showed everything. So now let's have a look on the collateral included together with that system. As I said, oh, I forgot to show one more thing. As I said, um, I have VGA cable, which is about 10 feet. And if you don't like this location of the system, you can move it on the side where uh, the serial cable and power cable from the keyboard is long enough to do that. That VJ cable will go from the monitor to the system, which is good too. Uh, now here with the system we have we have tutorial manual, we have introduction manual, we have some collateral, really nice looking original flare light stuff. Uh, we also have a common summary and we have a very serious original server's manual for the system. So that's the most complete, including um, field change notice embedded into their, uh, that document. I really like it. Very, very well built and with all original stamps. So you may notice why I decided to go with that special uh, Stanford music keyboard. And here is a cool trick. That is adjustable stand. Um, every piece like it has integrated motor inside it, so we can adjust it by the switches. Up and down. You have to do that one by one right now, please. I think that's it. Of course, the monitor stand is also adjustable. If you want to move it closer, you always can do. You can move it to the back side. So, also, foot switch pedal is included. It's special pedal because it needs to have a special connector on the pedal side because music keyboard only accepts this type of a connector so right now I unplugged it. Uh, I think that's it. Alright, so thank you. Thank you for looking at that video. If you have any additional questions about what's included in the system, let me know. Thanks.